Hey everyone, so today we're taking a deep dive into Ginkgo Bioworks, which trades as DNA stock. I'm going to talk first briefly about the stock and its trajectory since going public, and then we'll talk about the company itself explaining what they do. After that, we'll look at the company fundamentals and some key data to know, and then finally I will give my thoughts overall about the company. So this is the biotech deep dive for the month of May, which is being released seven days early for patrons. Also, just real quick, if you're new here to CRISPR Investors, definitely consider subscribing below if investing in CRISPR interests you. And also make sure to check out the CRISPR Investors Discord, which has all sorts of exclusive alerts and other automated updates for investing in CRISPR, as well as my personal portfolio updates. And you can check that out linked below in the description on my Patreon page or via YouTube membership also below. So starting off, Ginkgo Bioworks history going public traces all the way back to the SPAC bubble of 2020, entering 2021 when countless private companies made deals with SPACs to take their companies public at sky-high valuations. I'm not going to go down that rabbit hole today, but basically Ginkgo Bioworks ended up making a deal with Soaring Eagle Acquisition Corporation, formerly SRNG stock, in May of 2021, right at the end of the SPAC bubble as things were starting to pop. And the deal valued the company at $15 billion at $10 a share. Now, if you take a look at this chart here, you can see the stock seemed to have stayed flat for a bit before beginning its nosedive. And that is because in the period between when a deal is announced and the SPAC merger is completed, the newly created company from the merger, in this case Ginkgo Bioworks, still isn't officially trading under the SPAC's name. It's still just Soaring Eagle Acquisition Corp, whose value is exactly around 10 bucks a share. Anyways, you can see when the stock starts to move, and that is in September 2021, and that was when the merger was officially completed, and ticker DNA replaced ticker SRNG. Interestingly enough, the stock went all the way up to $15.86 per share back in November 9th of 2021. There was a huge amount of PR going on in popularity for the company that spread as it officially went public, which caused the buying. That said, at the same time, we started to notice the market in general wobble a bit. The Nasdaq composite actually peaked in mid-November 2021. So since then, from its 52-week high, it's down 75 plus percent, this being DNA stock. And actually at its low, it was down all the way to $2.09 per share, more than 80% from highs. The reasoning for this is almost entirely due to the correction in biotech in the general stock market, but we've seen the most intense sell-off in small and micro biotech companies in the last six months. Let's switch over though and take a look at Ginkgo Bioworks itself, the company. So the company was founded by a group of classmates from MIT along with Professor Tom Knight in 2008. The current CEO of the company is one of the co-founders, Jason Kelly. Ginkgo's focus is essentially leveraging the existing power of biology to create factories that enable the identification and synthesis of certain cells, according compounds, flavors, ingredients, and the like, that are derived from biology to allow other companies to develop said products. At the core of the company, they have these foundries. These are these factories, these biofactories, three of them, which allow for engineers to prototype many different biological designs to find the one that works for them. In them, in this case, is some other company, some third party or related company. Their foundries allow for fermentation, strain engineering, DNA synthesis, and connect to software and automation tools. And it is these facilities that form the fundamental structure of Ginkgo. Basically, instead of taking on the load of creating products themselves, which can be a cash intensive and resource heavy business, they put that on the companies that they sell their foundry services to do. For example, a company like Robertet, which makes flavors and additives, they might come to Ginkgo and use their software and bioengineering facilities to create some new molecule with a new scent, and then once they do this, they go back and then it's their job to produce and manufacture the compound at scale. So the products that are eventually being created are not, in fact, Ginkgo's. And although they do have the potential to get royalties down the line from them, Ginkgo's got potential applications in a variety of different fields. And so they work with third parties as well as companies they spin out from themselves to make products they see as potentially appealing. So to elaborate on the products that they create themselves, 
Basically, Ginkgo could create and spin out an entirely new entity, and by mean could, I mean they are doing this, and then buy an equity stake in the company while giving it financing to get started, and in turn that company would then spend that, that investment back into paying for Ginkgo's foundry services to develop and create the product they're looking to manufacture. And this is in one respect a potential for huge returns because it allows Ginkgo to capitalize off these companies' success without having to create the products themselves. But it is also a source of deception or misdirection with respect to their current revenue growth because they can artificially increase their revenues by spinning out companies and having these companies buy their services. And this was something pointed out in Scorpion Capital Short Report released a while back as well. I personally haven't seen anything enough to point out that this is fraudulence by the company, but more likely an actual focus of theirs, but at the same time has led to something that looks a bit suspicious or kind of wrong on paper. The other business segment that they have launched into in the last year or so has been biosecurity, which is a fancy way of saying COVID-19 related services like testing. As you can see here, they have grown the segment quite a bit since 2020, going from 17 million to 201 million full year 2021. And then in the first quarter of 2022, they did 147 million in revenue. But this is projected to go down accordingly as COVID spending decreases, which is 210 expected for the full year 2022. So personally, I'm not factoring in this biosecurity revenue too much in the long-term valuation of the company, although they do cite in a recent investor presentation of the plans to extend their biosecurity business segment into a sustainable business plan. More generally though, you can see a really good picture here of all the sectors they offer to other companies involved and according partnerships with pharma and biotech, the clear number one, then with industrials and environment and food and nutrition at number three. As we shift now to talking about the fundamentals, the breakdown of their foundry revenue is shown here for Q1 2021. And you can see they did a total of 21 million with 37% from third parties and 63% from related parties, meaning the companies that Ginkgo has spun out and has invested in. The biggest concern though that I've seen from Ginkgo at least is their stock based compensation and compensation in general, not just being stock. And that is with CEO Jason Kelly and also the COO Reshma Shetty not only being one of the highest paid executives in biotech, but one of the highest paid executives in the entire market. In 2021, CEO Jason Kelly and CEO Reshma Shetty each got more than $364 million in compensation, primarily stock-based compensation, but almost entirely. I think it's pretty extreme the company thinks they are worth that much each. I don't think there's any chance they're doing a job being paid almost a million dollars a day that someone else out there couldn't do for less. Maybe there's something I'm not privy to, but I just have a hard time believing that. And for a company that talks itself up so much, this is something that bothers me the most, especially seeing that in Q1 2022, they gave out $659 million in stock-based compensation, bringing their net loss to $675 million for the quarter. Now, looking at their fundamentals more broadly, they currently have around $1.5 billion in cash, which considering the stock-based compensation is not in fact a cash expense, they only lost around $16 million total last quarter, although biosecurity net profit did play a role in bringing that from the $52 million net loss in their foundry segment. They currently have a price to sales ratio of $14.50, which albeit not very expensive, is lower than the FANG companies right now. As far as price to book value, you can see they have a value of 4.1 compared to peers like Zymerge and Amaris shown here. Looking at the revenue growth and comparing it, you can see how steep the quarter over quarter growth is compared to all the other companies with that biosecurity revenue. The gross margin right now isn't that bad at 49%, but this is also, I think, as I mentioned, skewed by biosecurity. So one takeaway I have to share is that a better way to value the business would probably be to expect biosecurity to slowly go away and that higher gross margin to decrease. So zooming out here, my overall take on Ginkgo is that they have huge potential, and if they are in fact legitimate, which everything I have seen seems to indicate so, then they're going to be a much, much bigger company in the future. The biggest issue I see right now, which I don't think changes the fact of legitimacy, but rather on potential future concerns, is the large amount of stock compensation, particularly the roughly $700 million spent on their COO and CEO in 2021, when they are still not even generating half that much in full year revenue, and that's pretty crazy. They could easily have the keys and infrastructure to a $100 billion, $1 trillion company, but they could just as easily squander it by being cocky and not working every second and every minute to make that happen. 
So in the next year, I hope to see continued growth in their foundry business segment, particularly with third parties, which of course down the line comes with potential royalty revenue. Right now, DNA is valued at around $5.5 billion market cap at a, close to $3.66 a share, which I think it is worth right now factoring in their long-term opportunity somewhere between $2 and $4 a share where it's been floating. Long term, of course, the potential value is higher, but that means the story must hold true, which future earnings will only serve to prove. So that's a look at Ginkgo Bioworks and hopefully a good summary and look at the company today. Let me know below if you have any questions. Thanks so much for watching. Thanks for your support, and I'll catch you next time.